Hi, on MPI, brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey, this week it is Renaissance. That's yeah. right. What is the MPI new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, so this is a Renaissance uh, sensor conditioning chip, which I actually had on my list for a while and it's in stock now. Uh, so I'm glad to finally be able to feature it. Okay, this is the ZSSC 3241. The SSC is. Uh, sensor signal conditioning and z is you know renaissance all this stuff starts with z the rest of the numbers don't know what they mean but this chip is pretty cool um i you know when i look at the stuff to do for INPI, there's a lot of like here's another mosfet here's another you know bunk boost converter here's in the connector and so you know i try not to just cover the same types of things i like it when there's like a new unique chip and this is definitely like unique i've never seen a chip like this specifically designed for interfacing with um, resistive and uh, resistor bridge sensors without having to kind of diy it all yourself using op amps and 24-bit adcs so this is a chip and it's got like you know every time you look at it uh like it there's like more stuff that you discover and you're like that's kind of cool it's a chip that's designed again to read uh bridge half bridge or um resistive sensors. I can actually also do, I think, voltage uh, source um, sensors. And I'll talk about some of those. And like some of the details, like it can do SPI or I squared C or one wire, or it has analog output. It can set up the resistor, resistive style or voltage style um, sensor in any kind of configuration. And there's like dozens and dozens of knobs and adjustments that you can do uh, to make it perfect for connecting to a sensor. And you, you probably don't need any other analog circuitry. You just plug this in and you get, you know, the ADC, the gain, the calibration, the NVM, everything um, for the same price as an ADC. So um, a lot of people, when they start electronics, they'll make a, you know, the first sensor project after a button is using usually a light sensor like this one. This is a CDS cell, a cadmium sulfide cell. And uh, these are, this is a beautiful diagram by Phil B. Um, they're made with a material that as more light hits it, the resistance changes. Uh, and so you can basically use it as a light sensor. Look, a lot of people are like, oh, this is a temperature sensor, humidity sensor. But when you actually like look at how the sensor works, it's not that you're measuring humidity, you're measuring a capacitor that is affected by humidity. Or in this case, you're not really measuring light, you're measuring resistance that changes with light. Um, and so for these sensors, the, you know, the CDS cells, they're pretty easy to wire up. And that's why they're good for beginners. It's a really good you know, first analog input sensing project because you have your LDR, your light dependent resistor, and then you have a fixed 10K resistor. You turn them into a voltage divider, and then you read the analog voltage into your microcontroller pin, like an Arduino or, um, you know, a Renaissance RA4M, you know, Wi-Fi minima, you know, you can also use those, anything with an ADC. And um, it's really easy because voltage reading is done on just about every microcontroller. Um, they don't have resistor readers. They actually only have voltage dividers. So it's another layer, you know, not only you're not measuring light, you're measuring resistance that changes with light. You're not even measuring resistance, you're measuring voltage that will change with the resistance that will change with light. And CDS cells, the resistance changes a lot. So depending on whether it's dark or light, you're gonna get you know three plus orders of magnitude difference from when it's dark, 300 ohms to, sorry, when it's uh, bright, um, you know, 100 or 200, 300 ohms, all the way down to 600 kilo ohms when it's dim or dark. So there's a, such a wide range that that resistor divider, you'll get like zero to three volts pretty easily. You know, it's very easy. Even if you have an eight bit or 10 bit microcontroller or ADC, you're gonna be able to read that difference. But other resistor sensors, especially as you become, you know, a more skilled engineer, um, other resistive sensors are a little tougher to use. This is a, a PT100. This is a piece of platinum that is calibrated to be 100 ohms or one kilo ohm in room temperature, 25.0 degrees C. And as the temperature changes, the resistance changes. In this case, it has three wires for calibration reasons, but really it's a resistor that only the red, it, the two red wires are used. Uh, sorry, the only one of the red and one of the white wires are used. So this is, uh, for example, from the data sheet for an RTD from Honeywell. 
And you'll see, you know, the resistance changes very, very slightly, um, but it does have a wide range from negative 100 to 600 ohms. And, um, you know, it'll go down one quarter or up by 20%, uh, depending on the temperature. So it, there is a little bit of um, variation, but it's not going to be the uh, three order of magnitude variation of the CDSL. It's going to be a, a much smaller amount. And a lot of people use PT 100 or 1000s because they're very good precision. So you can get, you know, 0 0.1 degree or 0.5 degree um, precision and accuracy over a wide temperature range, but only if you can read that resistance at the accuracy that you want, right? If your ADC is, is has 5% error, it doesn't matter how good your um, sensor is, you're going to have the error that comes in from uh, temperature variation or from the resistor variation. Another common resistive type cell is the strain gauge. Uh, these come with four wires because they're actually usually pre-wired up in a uh, Wheatstone bridge. Not going to cover Wheatstone bridge. Don't have time to talk about how um, that works, but it's a way of, it's a, it's a slightly better way than just a resistor divider way of measuring resistance changes. This is made by um, microprinting a conducted material that as um, it gets bent or you know twisted or torqued or whatever, the resistance changes. And it really is a very, very small amount. Like if you thought the PT100 was a small variation, this is even less. Like to read a strain gauge, you really need a 24-bit uh, ADC. So um, what this chip does, you know, so I like this is, you know, you, you can't really use a resistor divider. By the time you get to the PT100 or PT1000, or the strain gauges, you you can't really use a microcontroller ADC if you want to get any reasonable uh, precision. Because with the light sensor, maybe you just want to know, is it light or dark? Like those are often used for automatically turning on, uh, you know, outdoor lights. They just need to know, is it dark or light out? They don't care how many lux. But with temperature and weight, you often need to have very good accuracy. If you're using that temperature sensor in a chemical um, reaction container, you need to have it be calibrated and perfectly kept at the temperature for as long as you need for the chemical reaction to occur. For the load cell, if you're going to the store and you're buying a pound of meat or veggies, you don't want to be charged more and you don't want to get less. It has to be you know, within 1% or 0.1% um, accuracy and precision. You want, you want really good quality output. So you, you know, what you can often do is you know, maybe you have a better quality resistor, maybe you have some code that does some calibration, maybe use an op amp. But it can get, you know, very complicated. You end up with a lot of potentiometers that you're tweaking to try to optimize the um, output to get it to be the same because each strain gauge has slight variations too. PT100 are usually pre-calibrated for you, but still sometimes there's a little bit of offset to your sensor. This chip, the uh, SCC34, well, boy, I forgot the last few digits, the ZSSC, what it does is everything you need. It's got the PGA, the programmable gain stage. It's got 24 to 12 to 24 bit ADC. And um, it's got a math section that can do offset calculations for you and we'll go through it. Um, and then the output again can, they can output in three different ways. You can get the output as SPI, I squared C data, or analog output, which I think is very interesting. So you can get the value in, perform all these mathematical calculations on it, and then you pipe the, the voltage that you want scaled um, to the A out pin. Okay, so here are some application examples. You know, they show it with, um, you know, a, a bridge, uh, a Wheatstone bridge setup. They show, you know, uh, the, again, a PT100 or PT1000 is very popular or a uh, PTC resistor divider, or um, you've got a uh, uh, strain gauge. They have one wire output, which I think is kind of fascinating. That's very rare to see something that is programmable with one wire, but it does let you use it in um, setups. You've got like some Dallas 18B 20s. You want to have some other kind of sensor with only one wire output. Um, you can set it up with this. You do have to pre-configure it. Um, but at least then you can you can read the data back out, although one wire is a little slow. Um, there's, like I said, bazillion knobs. There is, uh, for example, ADC. You can go all the way up to 24-bit ADC if you need that precision, but it's going to be much slower. Uh, you're only going to get, you know, it looks like it takes uh, 4.7 milliseconds per conversion. 
Whereas 12 bit, you're going to get it be like 40 times faster. So, you know, you, you have a trade off of ADC resolution and speed. There's also internally a programmable gain stage, very handy, um, you know, especially for those strain gauges where the changes in resistance are so, so small. You might want to have multiple, you know, both the 1.8 second gain stage and the 300 times um, first stage. But when you're dealing with something like a um, light resistor or a temperature, a, a positive temperature coefficient resistor, maybe you don't need as much gain. You don't want to uh, blow out your um, analog uh, digital input, but this saves you all that op amp configuration. Um, there's also how you, you can configure it. You saw in the application diagram, you can set up as a resistor divider and it will, you can add it, you know, set up with what resistor you want. It'll handle the internal resistor for you, or you can set it up as a bridge. There's also interrupt outputs. Um, you can tell it, hey, you know, I want IRQ based on this threshold change above or below. And they've got examples for all of that. And then uh, I think I don't have it here, but you can have it in continuous. You can set it for continuous um, readings or you can do one shots. So if you want continuous, that's when you would have like the analog output or, you know, use whatever the data is ready. You read it from I squared C or SPI. There's also non-volatile memory built in. So this would be great for where you put your uh, calibration settings. So, you know, each sensor does have slight change. You know, what, when you get a sensor that, oh, this humidity sensor has, you know, 1% or 2% humidity, why, how, how can they get that when most humidity sensors are 3 to 5%? Uh, it's just because they're calibrated. It's not like they build them any better. The, the sensor itself, um, the way the sensor is built may natively have some in, uh, inaccuracies, but you can calibrate them. Um, and non-volatile memory is where you store that, store that calibration. So you, you, know, you calibrate it in the factory, you send it out to the user, and each one's going to have slightly different settings in here for uh, voltage offsets, for temperature coefficients. Like there's all these settings that you can use the non-volatile memory for. There's also a diagnostic check command. So it'll tell you like, hey, your sensor band is connected or it's shorted. Um, or, you know, I think I'm putting this much current in, but I'm actually, you know, this much is what's coming out. Um, so you can uh, make sure that, you know, when you're dealing with these simple resistive sensors, uh, it's it's very easy for them to get disconnected and suddenly like your, your temperature you think it is, is shooting up or shooting down because it's actually uh, measuring an open circuit. And I also recommend there is eval boards available, um, particularly because this sensor has so many knobs and settings. What's nice about getting the eval board is that you plug it into your computer and run the software and you can tweak each one of those settings and see the output. Um, so you don't have to like write the whole driver and figure out what is it gonna, you know, with your particular sensor, what's the configuration values you're gonna need. You set it all up in the eval software, and then you can, uh, they have an output that tells you what I squared C or SPI commands were sent. You can then import that into your firmware. And uh, you use this example showing all the different places you can um, configure it. And it is in stock. Go on, it's key. The ZSSC3241 available. And again, the pricing, it's about the same price as a 24 bit ADC. So instead of just getting an ADC that might work only over I squared C or SPI, get this and you get the ADC and the programmable gain and the configuration and the NVM, internal temperature sensors, continuous mode, da, 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 forever and ever and ever. Um, and you can use it with like pretty much any kind of resistive sensor. And that's my MPI. Hi, on MPI.